Okay, it's been two years since I've done a uh, video on the LEDs that you can get at the dollar stores. In fact, in this case, this is a uh, dollar tree. And of course, there are a dollar and a quarter now, but in the last two years, now you get two bulbs in a pack for a dollar and a quarter. Now, the problem with the these LED lights and virtually any LED light you buy, they purposely hit the uh, LED in the circuit, the LEDs in the circuit, with too much current, so they'll have a shorter lifespan. So, <clears throat> I'll link to the video that I did two years ago, and uh, normally I like just watching the videos on all these LED lights and stuff by Big Clive, but being that he's uh, over on the other side of the pond, all of his reviews are always on bulbs that we don't get, because we're at 120 volts and he's at 220 to 240. So. Here we are at this one, buy the 100 watt version, because what we're going to do is we're going to change two resistors inside here and uh, basically drop it down from drawing uh, where it's forcing over 100 milliamps of current through every LED down to about 40, which is still on the high side, but it'll run cool. And those ones that I modified, even though the bulbs were different two years ago, are still running in the house just fine, no failures. So uh, both these bulbs, that one there and this one here, <clears throat> I have modified. And here's basically uh, the circuit. So you can see you've got your 120 volts AC coming in. They run it through a 10 ohm resistor, which both works as an inrush uh, protection device, but also as a fuse. So if something goes ter terribly wrong, like the bridge rectifier shorts out, then that little resistor is going to burn up. And it should stop your house from burning down. So on the outside of the bridge, they run to a filter cap, 15 NF at uh, 200 volts, but that filters out because it's DC to giving you about 161 volts DC from the 120 in. They do have a, a drain resistor on there, so when you turn the switch off, this little cap will be drained down so you don't get the ghosting of the LED faintly glowing and all that kind of stuff. Or if you were to grab the two uh, ends of these prongs and then screw in, you're not going to get a you know, 160 volt shock or anything, because that cap will be drained down. Now there's a total of uh, 15 LEDs inside these. Um, let's see, let's unscrew this one, because it's so bright it's distracting me. Okay, to get these off you just run, I run a little X-Acto knife, uh, you know, like a little uh, blue pixie knife type thing around there. And then, I try to do this with one hand. I can't. I gotta set you down. Hang on. There we go. You can get that off and you can also snap it back on and you can re glue it if you want. But um, basically, what they've changed in the last two years is now there are two current limiting uh, chips instead of just one. And um, they're running them in parallel though. So it wasn't like half of the LEDs were on one and half the LEDs were on the other. They are running the 15 LEDs. One starts here and number 15 is right there. Circuit-wise though, V plus from that capacitor goes to LED number seven first. And then all these LEDs are in series with each other till they come back around to this one, which is actually LED number 15 if you're counting from here. And that goes to all of these pins, these four pins on these chips, which don't appear to have any marking that I can see with my eyes. Um, I don't have a strong enough magnifier to uh, get in there, but it seems to be the same uh, little current limiting chip that I've seen in all of these, so whatever that number was, it's still there. So they're running all those, and uh, originally they have uh, two 12 ohm resistors down where these resistor legs are going down to, just snipped those resistors out of there and soldered these back in place. I really wanted to put in some uh, 22 ohm resistors to replace the two 12 ohm resistors just to cut the uh, power consumption in half and still give me a lot of brightness. But all I could find when I was scavenging through all my drawers and uh, old circuit boards and crap I have laying around was a couple of 33 ohmers. Well, in fact, four because I put two in there and put two in here. And uh, basically, with the, I've got it written down here somewhere. 
Just trying to see. Well, the current drain I was getting, AC milliamp current drain that I was getting from the factory, was about 106 milliamps that they were forcing through uh, the LEDs. Each one of these LEDs has about an 8 volt drop, which I found a little unusual, because normally white LEDs um, are going to be about a 3 volt drop, or just a hair under. So, I'm not quite sure how they came up with 8, but that's what it measured out when I stuck the voltmeter across all these and was checking them under load. So we'll just go with that. And basically, once I changed the two 12-ohm resistors to two 33-ohm resistors, the whole lamp now only draws 41.3 milliamps. So it's going to run cold. It gives me as much light as the 60-watt LED bulb would, but a 60-watt LED bulb has less LEDs in it. They're still pushing it just as hard to get the 60 watts of light out of there, and so they fail. So that's why I say you buy the 100 watt lamps, you do the resistor mod, and the dang things last forever. At least they do for me. I've got over two years on the other ones that I modded two years ago on the video that I'll link down below. Actually, I've done a few videos in the past uh, spurred on by a Big Clive's experimentation. Uh, like I say, in the old days, there actually was only one current limiting uh, chip in the lamp, and I would put uh, a trim pot in there. And then he could actually reach in with a little screwdriver and I could adjust the lamp to any amount of light I wanted. He could take it down to real dim for a reading lamp or twist it on up and light up the room. So anything you want. So, for a buck and a quarter, you get two lamps. If you're uh, good at soldering small things, which is getting harder and harder for me to do with my cataracts. And I don't want to have the surgery yet. Um, but if I can do it, I figure you can probably do it. But uh, use your own meter to make sure you've done it right before you apply power to the circuit so that you don't fry that 10 ohm resistor because of some short or something. Um, basically, the first two pins, see one side you'll notice all the pins are hooked together and they run up to the LED. And the other side you'll notice these two you don't really see going anywhere. But this first one actually goes to the negative rail and the second one is the one that has a resistor. So it's basically a resistor between pins 1 and pin 2. But it's just as easy to grab them uh, after you've snipped the original factory resistors, which is I realize it's hard to see because I've got... Maybe you can uh, take a peek in there. See that one's still there? I cut the trace in this one. So this isn't very pretty. Let's take a look at this one. I tried to make this one look a little bit neater. and soldered the uh, resistors right down on top of where the surface mount resistors used to be. We got enough light. Maybe if I get enough light in there you guys can even see a number on the chip or something. If we get it angled just right. I just don't see it. It's, uh, I realize the viewfinder on this isn't that great, but I can't see a number on there. This is your bridge rectifier. The capacitor is plugged in underneath there and it's down inside here. This is where they bring the live and neutral up to the board. And like I say, these are the two current regulators. And uh, starting with pin 7, that 161 volts DC feeds into that. And each one of these just feeds to the next one big chain all the way around to get to this last one. Then it feeds back to all four of those pins bridged together and all four of those bridged together. The two pin 1s then are connected to the negative side and the current sense go to the pin twos. So it's a very, uh, very simple little circuit. It does seem to work quite well. And uh, just thought it'd be fun to see how things might have changed in the last two years.